Eric Horn here with Brett Dawson after the Thunder's 109-106 win over the Utah Jazz on Tuesday night. And, uh, you know, it seems like it's been a common theme, this whole Russell Westbrook uh, saving the day thing. Um, you know, I, I feel like this guy's getting pretty good at this closing out game situation. He's not bad. And you know what? It didn't seem tonight like they were going to need that. Uh, you make your first 12 threes. Yeah. Uh, you think maybe, which Oklahoma City did, the first team to do that in the NBA since 1998. Uh, you think you're going to be in pretty good shape. But Utah kept this thing reasonably close all the way, 12 threes in a row, and yet never led by more than 13 points. And so Utah makes a big run. The Utah defense does what it does. It keeps the game very close. Utah gets the lead, and then here comes Russell Westbrook. 43 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, two huge baskets at the end. And then what was kind of interesting, you knew he was going to look to score at the end because that's yeah. what Russell Westbrook does. But he also was going to score at the end because Billy Donovan rolled out a lineup around him that was just defensive guys. Like, like you go do your thing, Russ, and let's let's grind it out defensively. Yeah, it, it was it was a predictable um, situation at the end of the game because the last minute and change, Billy Donovan goes with Stephen Adams, Taj Gibson, Andre Robertson, and Jeremy Grant. Okay. Who's your go-to scorer in that combination with Russell Westbrook? It's Russell Westbrook. Right. Yet he still makes the two biggest shots of the game, uh, scores an and one bank shot, and basically finishes off the Jazz by himself for the second time in, in three meetings. You know, the first meeting they play the Jazz in, in Utah, they get blown out. Uh, second time, Westbrook finishes them off with a game winner. And then they come here tonight, and, and like you said, despite all the threes that the Thunder made tonight, they still needed those Russell Westbrook, Russ Westbrook heroics. And this guy has consistently been the best clutch time guy late in games this entire season, and he continues to solidify his MVP uh, case. I mean, the, the case itself has been solid all season, right. but it's to the point to where it's undeniable that he's got to be the guy at this moment because he's doing more on his shoulders than James Harden is doing for the Houston Rockets who just picked up a Lou Williams. Right. Uh, who have a ton of offensive weapons around him. What Russell Westbrook on a night-to-night -night basis is probably doing more than James Harden. And quietly, by the way, tonight the Thunder moves to 10 games over 500. That's a season high. Yeah. They're starting to play very well. We've talked at length about the fact that their schedule's gonna be a little easier down the stretch, and so he's got a chance to kind of build his resume even further as he gets wins. But his resume doesn't need a lot of help. The dude is averaging a triple-double. He got his 30th triple-double tonight. Mm -hmm. 30th in a season. It's a crazy number to have. Um, you know, he, he, he keeps putting himself in position to average that triple-double and do something nobody's done since 1962 in the NBA. His case is really strong. But these late finishes, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. It feels like it's every other night he's doing this. Yeah, and, uh, you know, 30 triple-doubles. He's, he's within one of Wilt Chamberlain for tying for the second most all-time in a season. Uh, he, he's on that pace to, to catch Oscar Robertson's 41 in a season. And, uh, you know, he continues to make the guys around him better as well. You know, tonight you see uh, him getting Doug McDermott going. Yep. Uh, there was a string in the second quarter in that midst of the 12 for 12 stretch starting from three where Doug McDermott made four in about a five-minute stretch and Russell Westbrook was finding him on some of those. Um, McDermott had his best game as a Thunder so far in three games. Uh, he finished with 16 points. Alex Abrinas started again, got two assists. Uh, uh, Russell Westbrook got two assists uh, to him. Uh, you know, he continues to find these guys from three, and it seems like he's really enjoying getting these guys these open looks. Yeah, and they're playing without Victor Oladipo again tonight. Third straight game he didn't play, so it brings starts for him. You miss him at the end because he's a guy who can defend and also give you a little offensive help. But again, Westbrook getting those other guys involved. He's finding guys that, in the ways that he was finding Oladipo earlier when he was playing. He's finding Abrinas. He does seem to really enjoy uh, finding Abrinas. Uh, he does the little beard yeah. thing even though he doesn't have a beard but he, have one. <laughs> yeah yeah he, he enjoys doing this he, he does enjoy playing with all these guys he has been and you know knock on wood with Russell he's been in a great mood I mean he's been in a great mood since the trade he's been upbeat he's been fun to talk to for the media which isn't always the case he's smiling a lot on the floor he seems to be enjoying the guys he's playing with including these two new guys this just seems to be uh, Russell Westbrook in a really good place yeah and uh, you know just to talk about that close again uh, Billy Donovan said, you know, that wouldn't seem like a situation where you would go as defensive as they did, but um, he, he felt like he, he could trust Russell to make that, that pull-up jumper, yep. and, and Russell did deliver. And those guys down the stretch delivered as well. He had isolation situations where Steven Adams was on a guy like a Joe Johnson. He forced him to the baseline to make that pass, that, that forced a turnover that pretty much sealed the game. Uh, he had Taj Gibson isolated on Joe Johnson before uh, Utah had to call a timeout and regroup. Uh, Andre Robertson forced Gordon Hayward into 
to not taking an open three pointer yet because Robertson's yeah. recovery was so great on, on on Gordon Hayward getting open from three that Hayward had to pull it down to make the pass. You had a lot of guys that were really doing doing incredible defensive jobs at the close of that game in a critical game because Utah is in that four seed right yep. now. And the Thunder was three games back coming into tonight. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes the game, it gives it, you know, Russell Westbrook said today it didn't give it an extra sense of urgency, but it does. It, it is mm -hmm. important. They want to catch this team. Uh, and this would have been, look, no game in 82 is like a crushing loss. This would have been a tough loss. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. After the shot, after the start they got off to shooting the ball uh, with a 13-point lead in the second half against a team that you really want to beat and need to beat, uh, to lose that way. And it was a really impressive game from Utah just to, to come back and be in the game after that. Um, but it, it would have been a great win for Utah and a very tough win for the Thunder and they really did this is who they are this is what this team is it's Russell Westbrook and and guys who grind it out and get it done they've got some more weapons now a little bit more offensive uh, options and some different combinations and Billy Donovan who is a tinkerer gets to tinker um, but this tonight you know Taj Gibson said this is what you need to do if you want to win games and make a deep run this is what you do when your offense clicks great and when it doesn't you you revert to your your identity and you do these things at the end of the game Thunder heads to Portland. Uh, they're off tomorrow. They head to Portland on Thursday for, for a game against Dame Lillard and, and that three-point shooting team. Uh, should be an interesting test. Again, the last time Thunder went up to Portland, they got blown out. So we'll see uh, what happens when they go up there. Here's some post-game video from Billy Donovan, Russell Westbrook, and Taj Gibson. Taj Gibson. There we go. The team going to be a game. They made a fight. They're a great team. And I thought we did a good job of keeping our composure and executing down the stretch. How did your teammates show that they should get your trust game after game the way that they all helped tonight with the threes, with the scoring? With It just seems like you guys have meshed pretty easily. Uh, it definitely, definitely made my job a lot easier. Uh, you know, just running. I'm going to run and put teams in a tough spot uh, because they have to help. And, you know, we have great shooters around the perimeter. Those guys can knock down shots, great bigs that run the floor very well, that can catch and finish. So, you know, it's tough uh, for teams, and I thought they did a great job of that tonight. You got that stop on demand like you want down the stretch. What did you notice about Steven's defense in the final play and then you know everything that kind of uh, led up to that? I thought it was important, man. Uh, the little things like that, making him shoot a high contested shot, uh, being able to get out, get on the break, get the rebound, and push. I thought everybody did a great job getting the stops when we needed to, um, and, you know, closing the game out. Russ, Billy talked the other night after the Pelicans game that you have a unique ability to when it's time to win that you can focus a little bit better. Do you, do you feel that yourself? Uh, definitely. I mean, I try to find uh, put myself in a position where, you know, don't panic. Uh, been there before. Uh, you know, as a leader, your job is to make sure that my team is calm as well. And that's what I try to do, make sure everybody's level-hearted and make sure we can concentrate on, on executing down the stretch because, you know, many years that was our, our problem, being able to execute and, and get the shots we wanted to. Uh, but I think uh, that's a part of my job is to make sure we execute down the stretch. When you guys are having a stretch like that and you're making every three, is there is there a mentality on the team where you're just kind of like, I want to get in on this? And everybody wants to get in? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, you just keep getting those guys shots. Uh, you know, those guys are great shooters. Um, you keep finding the ball to find the, the shooter. And I think guys are making uh, tremendous, doing a tremendous job of making the right plays, getting those guys open shots. Did you know that you guys hadn't missed? I did not. I know. I shouldn't have shot the shot. I shot. Maybe I'm <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen out of, um, out of the Doug lately? Honestly, just add him to the team. What have you seen that you didn't know about him? Before? Uh, I mean, I uh, I know he's a professional. And I think just him coming in every day, constantly working on this game, uh, being attentive to to trying to learn. Obviously, learn the offense, learn the, the way we play, and you know, obviously, he can shoot the basketball at a very, very high level. And, you know, him and Todd just came in and uh, doing a great job with just meshing with the guys and doing an amazing job. You guys are playing without without Vic right now. Just talk about the possibility with the lineups when Vic comes back to the lineup. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot of different lines that you can see on the floor. Um, you know, our job now is to be able to hold it down until Vic gets healthy enough to be able to play, and uh, that's what we do. Russ, you dominated the glass, scored 22 fast break points. How pivotal was that? kind of aspect of the game, being able to turn defensive stops into offense? It was huge. Um, like I said this morning, pace was a big, big thing for us, especially against this team. Um, and I thought we did a great job of keeping the pace high, keeping the basketball moving at a, at a high pace. I, I thought our guys um, did really a, a tremendous job tonight in, in a lot of different areas, certainly in the, in the first half. I mean, you know, whoever thinks any team ever goes 12 for 13 from, from the three-point line. I uh, was a little concerned at halftime that we were only up eight. Usually that's a recipe to be up by about 30. Um, but I thought the, the difference was, you know, they got to the free throw line, they scored a lot of points in the deep paint, and that certainly offset some of our three-point shooting. And then the fact that I think that they maybe were five for 10 from the line. 
you know, the third quarter, I thought we played really, really well on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. And then that fourth quarter, I thought we got a little bit stagnant. We missed some shots. And give them credit. You know, they, they made a lot of very, very difficult, tough challenge shots and, and some open shots um, to give themselves a chance. And then, obviously, Russell made some exceptional plays coming down the stretch. And I thought the last uh, possession defensively with the second left on the clock, we did a really, really nice job of, of forcing him into a, into a tough shot. So there was a lot of things. I, I thought when our defense wasn't, I mean, our offense was not going well, I thought we kind of relied on our defense and we battled through. We battled through a lot of different things tonight. They're a very, very good team. And um, it, it was good to see some of the adversity we had to go through as a team to you know, overcome, to put ourselves in a position to win. You got anything new to say about Westbrook? I mean, after what he did the last three minutes. Yeah, and you know, I said this before. You know, I really felt like he had some really, really good looks. You know, at the elbow free throw line area that he just did not make. Um, and it was kind of very similar to the third quarter at Utah. The last time we played them, you know, he went through. I think he was maybe over six or over seven in the third quarter against Utah. You know, and in the fourth quarter, he kind of made a layup and he kind of got himself going. Um, like I said, he's got a great ability that as the game's going on to put whatever is behind him, behind him and focus what's on fr in front of him. And, you know, that's what he did. Um, you know, I was about to call timeout um, on, the, on the missed shot rebound. Um, and I saw it was a broken floor situation for him. And, you know, I wanted to give him the opportunity to create and do what he does. And, you know, obviously it was a great M1 and finish, you know, for us. Um, and, and and then Steven, I thought Steven did a really, really nice job. It probably will go, you know, unnoticed. Joe Johnson, he were isolated on the corner and he drove baseline and Steven did a really nice job kind of keeping him behind the backboard and we were able to generate a turnover there. Billy, just what are your thoughts on that final minute in terms of the defensive lineup you had out there, particularly with having Taj out there? You know, a guy who hasn't played a ton of games with, with this crew. I mean, being able to close out the way you all did defensively in that final minute or so. Yeah, I mean, you know, Alice gave us a, a, a great boost starting, um, played really, really well. Um, you know, it was a tough three, a foul and three point shooter. That it was a tough call. I don't know if it was necessarily he didn't. I think don't, I don't think he felt like he fouled him. Um, and then they were switching and trying to put us in some binds, and you know, just kind of made a decision to really at that point just kind of go all defense. You know, coming down the stretch. Um, and tried to put our best guys out there. Um, and maybe it goes against conventional thinking, so to speak, when you're down by four. You think you need mm -hmm. offense at that point in time. But I thought we needed to get a couple stops and 